Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be doing Long Barrel versus Suppressor. This is a question that I have gotten since day one of In-Depth, and that is, what happens when I put Long Barrel and Suppressor on the same gun? Does the Long Barrel cancel out the Suppressor, or is it the other way around? Which one wins? We're going to be answering that today. The gameplay you're seeing is me using it on the CUDA, so you can kind of get a feel for how it performs on submachine guns, though I definitely wouldn't recommend it. And I've covered both of these attachments in depth in their own episodes if you want to learn a little bit more, but we're going to do a crack crash course on each one here in the beginning of this episode. So the suppressor range reductions are as follows. On an assault rifle you get 75% less range, on a submachine gun you get 40% less range, and on a light machine gun you get 90% less range. On the original in-depth I didn't have hard stats at the time, I was kind of doing it by hand, but these are the actual hard in-game coded stats. I do not have data for shotguns or pistols. I do know that it changes body multipliers on snipers so that it changes your one-shot kill areas, but we are not going to talk about shotguns and pistols today because I do not have stats for those. It's not me being lazy or not doing the legwork, rather it's me being accurate and not trying to expert on something that I don't know anything about. I'm not going to make up stats. We do actual real work here on In-Depth and no BS. The long barrel range extensions are as follows. For light machine guns and pistols, you get a flat 13% to all of your ranges, just a flat scalar bonus. For assault rifles, you get plus 100% to all of your ranges, and uh, for those of you not super Super math savvy, that's double, that doubles your range on assault rifles, so it's by far the most effective on assault rifle. For shotguns, you get plus 13% to the maximum range, and you get the same kind of thing going on with some machine guns, you get plus 25% to your maximum range, like that's the... Uh, that's your long range capabilities. It does nothing for your up close shots to kill on shotguns or up close shots to kill on SMGs. It's all about that super long range potential and ultimately not that practical. So from looking at these numbers, you should be able to deduce pretty clearly that the suppressor is more powerful. That's just kind of how it is. The suppressor dominates. Long barrel does not cancel out the suppressor. The, can the suppressor in almost all cases completely cancels out the long barrel and the long barrel is a useless attachment in conjunction with a suppressor. But this is a in depth we do numbers let's throw some hard stats on it and I'll show you exactly what the ranges are so with a long barrel and suppressor equipped a submachine gun will have negative 60% range and but it's only negative 25% to your maximum range to that like five shot kill range on the CUDA for instance to that long range potential light machine guns will have negative 88% range instead of negative 90% not much change there and assault rifles will have negative 50% range with a suppressor so yeah suppressor clearly dominates and I don't think that it's a good attachment. I feel like if you put long barrel on a weapon that has a suppressor, it's just a wasted pick 10 spot because the suppressor dominates it and completely just m nukes the range beyond redemption. I will say that there is some degree of viability of running it on an assault rifle, maybe. Like if you're okay with 50% range or you have a burst weapon or a KN44 and you really want that one burst or three shot kill range, maybe there's some viability there, but it's definitely not the most, ma most mathematically efficient thing, and it's clearly an awful combination for light machine guns or submachine guns or anything like that. Guys, that is all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, I hope that you learned something useful, and I hope to see a lot less of you running this goofy setup, because it's definitely not practical. The previous episode was on Metro Wall Run Spots, the next episode is going to be on the XR2, maybe? I'm kind of got some things going on in my personal life, super busy, and gun reviews tend to take longer than uh, statistic type episodes, but I'm going to try to have that done for you tomorrow. If I don't, give me a rain check, and as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.